We're all the time looking for somebody to work. We're always looking for somebody to do the will of God. Now, on the job, Daddy says all the time, he's always looking for somebody to work alongside him. He's looking for help. Same thing for God. He's looking for help. He's looking for somebody to do what he wants us to do. <clears throat> he says, which went out early in the morning. God went out early in the morning, late in the evening, and, and when the sun goes down, looking constantly, trying to find a group of people that will stay and that will serve God. Come on. <coughs> God help me, Lord. Come on. Uh, he's looking <coughs> for people that want something. Yeah. So he says, hey, I'll give you a reward in verse 2. It says he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. Yeah. You know, I said, man, what a penny a day. You couldn't get nobody nowadays to work for a penny a day. That's right. But when I looked at it from my spiritual standpoint, Come on. I said he looked at Come me on. and he said, I don't have much to offer you. Come on. But he said, I've got a mansion. Yeah. And he said, I didn't just let anybody go off. He said, I go away yeah. to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. He said, I'm creating mansions and I'm doing all of these things for you. Yeah. So I said, God's offering us that if we will labor and we will work in the field, he will give us heaven. Amen. <laughs> I said, man, what? how much better does it get than that? Right. You're working every day. You're laboring out in the field. You're doing all of this work right. for an opportunity to go to heaven. Amen. And it says, <coughs> heaven was enough to go to work for Jesus. Does anybody else believe that tonight? That it's worth going to heaven is worth enough working down here for Jesus. Yeah. And if a penny a day may not get you up to hit that alarm clock, but baby, heaven better get you up and stir you to go to heaven. Heaven better get you up when nothing else will. Heaven better make you rise up when nothing else will. Why? Because heaven is the greatest reward that you can ever get. Come on. <laughs> and it says in, in verse 3, he went out in about the third hour, about 9 a.m., he comes and checks on us. At 9 a.m., he comes and checks on us. Sometimes we start out good Come laboring. Come on. Come on. Come on. We start out living for God good. Come on. Come on. Come on. We come out the gate strong and we get saved. Oh, we'll tread on devils. We'll grab serpents. We'll do all this great stuff. Come on. Yeah. But come 9 o'clock, it's about break time. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you know what it's like to work by the hour. Nine o'clock. By 9.15, we're looking to take a break. Both of knows what I'm talking about. 9.15, you're looking for a break. Come on. Why? Because you done worked. You done labored. You done done everything you want to do. Come on. And you're looking for a break. Right. What happens? We start standing around. Come on. Come we start on. getting out of them. Yeah. We start thinking, man, I've got it made. Right. Come on. Man, I, man, I've made it thus far. Come on, man. I've survived these storms. Yeah. I've pressed on through these situations. Come on. And it's only nine o'clock. Hey, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. You ever look at that clock and say, man, it's got to be twelve thirty after all I've done. Come on. And you look at this 9 o'clock. Come, yeah. Come on. It's 9 o'clock. Yeah. You wonder, what am I going to do the rest of the day? Right. Anybody felt like that when you get up? You say, man, I've been doing all I can to stay saved all day. I've been serving and laboring and working in the field. And the devil's just been at me at every turn. Every time I look up, the devil's coming at me again. And I look up and it's 9 o'clock. Come on. Come on. Am I the only one? Come on. Come on, we've been there. Come on. But the problem is, we stop laboring. 
Can we get out of it? Come on. Amen. We get out of why? Because something has caught our attention. That's right. Yeah. Listen to the definition of out. It is not occupied or employed. Mm. Not scheduled to compete. Lacking work or basis. Come on. To run at low power and often disconnected. You know what I find? We got too many church people. Too many people, man. I, I let all this my voice is a little better. Oh, man, we got too many people that's running at lack of power. We got too many people that's operating in a non-occupied state. We got too many people living and they're just simply disconnected from God. Oh, they were good. They lived to God for a little while. They was able to push through, but somewhere along the way, they got disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere along the way, they found themselves running at a low power. Come on. <laughs> See, out there at work, we got those motors. Come on. We'll put them in. What do they got? They got high, high range and a low range. You hook that motor up and run one or two ways. If you run it at low power on something that's supposed to be high power, it won't turn that fan blade. But I've seen it where you hook it up and it's supposed to be low power and it runs high power and it's all you can do to keep that thing under control. That's how we used to live. We used to be that way where we just stayed high power all the time. We just run. You could keep us uh, to the place where you said, man, I can't hold them down. They're just trying to get away from me. Yeah, come on. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, we got to run it in low power. Come on. Amen. Amen. It says, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle. You know when you'll get run over by the devil? When you're standing around with your hands in your pockets. Yeah. My daddy said if we're playing football, don't stand around. Do anything but that. Because when you're standing around, that's when you'll find yourself getting run over. That's right. Same thing goes for here. <coughs> so verse 4 comes around. And he says unto them, Go ye into the, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And he said, and they went their way. Jesus, uh, the boss man, comes back by in verse 4 to remind you about heaven. He says, don't forget what you're working for. Don't forget what you're serving God for. Don't forget what you got up out of the bed this morning for. Don't you forget where I brought you from. Oh. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Ain't it a shame how we live in the place that God has to come by and remind oh. us? Oh. Amen. I thought about that, man. That's upsetting to think about. Amen. That God has to come by right. and remind you what you're working for. Oh, well, it's a right. shame yeah. when the boss man has to come by and say, Well, Paul, do you remember why I signed you up? Do you remember what I called you to do? Come on. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, man. I said, How pitiful are we sometimes that we find ourselves in that place? Yeah. And he has to come by and remind us what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. So he comes by and tells us how good a job that we could do yeah. to carry on to do what we're, called, what we're told. And then it says again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour. Come on. He hit us at 12 o'clock. In the sixth hour, we all know what twelve o'clock is. Yeah, come on, lunchtime. That's 
That's right. When are we the most vulnerable? Come on. When we get hungry. Come on. Come on, James. That's right. When we find ourselves hungry around lunchtime. Yeah. We find ourselves hungry, starving to death. Yeah. Don't know if we're gonna make it another by another meal. Right. We're starving to death. We forget. <coughs> we forget what we're working for. We forget what we came here to do yeah. because this fleshly body says I'm hungry. Oh. This fleshly body says I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm starving. I'm thirsty. And we get out of it. Yeah. We get distracted by the fact that we're hungry. We get distracted by the things of this world. This would be oftentimes when the sin would begin to creep in. Oh, because why? We found ourselves yeah. idle. Oh. We found ourselves hungry. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We find ourselves looking around and saying, God, I don't need you as much as I need this physical help. Come on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man. We find ourselves dealing with the situation, dealing with this circumstance. Yeah. It's causing us harm in our life, and we get distracted yeah. because we're hungry. We're focused on it. Yeah. yeah. Man. Then he comes again in the ninth hour at about 3 p.m. And by 3, oh, yeah. we've all decided oh, yeah. we're ready to go home. We've done it now. Come on. We've done it now. By 3, we've all decided right. we're ready to go home. Yeah. yeah. By 3, We've had all we're going to work today. Right. Come on. Yeah. Nobody's come in to the church. Come on. Nobody's trying to do anything. Right. Nobody's trying to make a change. That's right. We better go on ahead and pack it up, fellas. Get ready to go on in. That's right. There's nothing. There's nothing worse than cooperative energy at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no worse place in the world than cooperative energy at 3 o'clock. After 3 o'clock, people shut down. It may be different for Fuzz and him, but we're looking for 4.30. 4.30, baby. We're mindful of that. You know what we are? We get out of We get a lack of power. We reduce it on back because we're getting ready That's to right. go home. Yeah. We're not focused on, man, I hope something tears up. Come on. Man, I hope we get to go back out and work a little more. Come on. No, sir. We get that way at the end of the service. Come on, man. Come on. God's still trying to move. Yeah. <clears throat> man, God's still trying to move. God's still trying to have his way. Amen. And we're looking around saying, man, I'm just ready to go home. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. This ain't, this ain't the best preaching I've ever done. I can't do them by my voice. I'm sorry. Come on. But I'm telling you, they get to that point where we're about ready to go to the house. God's still trying to move. God's still waiting to have his way. And our mind goes to, I'm about ready to go to the house. That's right. Come on. I'm about ready to go to the house. We're getting out. It says, at about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing out. By the 11th hour, it's 5 o'clock. Some of us have made it on home to the house. We done shut her down. We've made it to the point where we're standing out. It's 5 o'clock. Man, daddy will call me at 5 o'clock sometimes. Man, my attitude's picked up. Why? I'm headed home. I ain't quite home by this time, but I'm headed that way. Yeah. Why? I'm going home. Yeah. And he says, and he saith unto them, 
Why stand ye here all day idle? Man, when, that, when I read that, that hit me so hard. I said, what happened? One mistake at 9 o'clock cost them all day. Come on. One lack of effort the first time they got caught standing around the island at 9 o'clock cost them all day. Yeah. <coughs> you say it's just one service. Come on. Come on. Come on now. <coughs> you say I was just 15 minutes late. Yeah. Come on. It was one Wednesday night hot dog. Yeah. Come on now. I, I, I'm telling you. Come on. Am, I, am I making any sense to you tonight? Come on. It's one Wednesday night hot dog. It's one night of a three night revival that we miss. Yeah. It's one little thing. Come on. It's one little thing that we didn't think was ever going to hurt us. Yeah. And he said, Why stand ye idle all day? He said, you fooled around and stood idle all day long. Come on. I believe for some of them, they looked up and they said, there's no way. Yeah, right. There's no way I've stood idle all day long. Yeah. That's the way the devil wants you to get right. to where you don't even recognize yeah. on, you've been idle right. all day long. That's right. You say, well, I didn't read my Bible today. Come on. You say, man, that ain't bad. What is it if you do that every day? Yes. Right. For some of us, the most we get is that scripture. Come on. Right. That Alan sends out. Yeah. Amen. What if you don't read that? What if you fall from that? Right. <coughs> Much less pray. Come on, man. Come on, man. Much less fast. Come on. Much less spending time with God. Right. <clears throat> but then in verse 7, they respond. They saith unto him, because no man hath hired us. And he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right that ye shall receive. Notice here, they started giving him excuses. Yeah. Oh, well, no man has hired us. Right. Ain't that where we love to stay? Yeah. Bound up amongst the excuses. Come on. Burdened down with excuses. Yeah. Reasonings for why we've stood around all day long. That's right. Reasons why we ain't done nothing for God all day long. Because why? We got an excuse for it. Amen. Well, you ain't told me to do nothing. That's right. You ain't give me nothing to do. You, right. you, right. you told me there ain't much for me to do today. Come on. I come here, Brother Paul, and you said it was going to be a slow one. Yeah. So I just kicked it back, took it easy. Right. I said, well, I'll just coast on through Amen. this on. Sunday morning. Come on. Yeah. It says they give excuses as to why they don't want to go to heaven. Come on. When you start giving up reasons for why you ain't living for God. Come on. When you start rolling out excuses yeah. for why you don't want to, why you ain't living for God, mm -hmm. it's simply you're giving excuses for why you don't want to go to heaven. Yeah. You're working for a price. You're working for a reward. And he yeah. said, I've done told you what I'm going to give you. All you got to do is labor. Amen. <laughs> and yet we will not labor. Come on. And you say, man, I've been giving him excuses. Man, I just, I, I'm a pew sitter. Come on. Amen. I, I, I'm a pew sitter. Let me tell you what. In Matthew 28 and 19, he gives a great commission. Yes. He says, go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. What does that tell us? You've got 
something to do. You got a job to do. You got something that you need to be doing. Come on, Rand, I'm, I'm done. This has been awful. I should let somebody up. But you say I ain't got nothing that I need to be doing. You say I ain't got nothing I need to be doing. You got the Great Commission. That's right. But you know why? We got so many excuses. You ain't standing at all, I promise you. Because over in Luke, he wrote another scripture. In 10 and 2, he said, The harvest is truly great. What is it? But the laborers are few. That's right. I read that. You can go back on your own time. And do your own research. Right. But I read it in Matthew. And I read it in Luke. I, I was going to flip over to John. But didn't have time. But I read it in Matthew and Luke. And I love the way Luke wrote it. Luke wrote. The harvest is truly great. But the labors are few. Then it continues on. And it says. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. I said, you know what? He put that in there. So the ones of us that don't want to harvest, you just say, man, I'm not, I'm not going to harvest. I just ain't going to do it. Luke says, why don't you just pray to the Father to send somebody to harvest. Right. You know what that made me know? I said Luke knew that there was going to be people that just flat out wouldn't harvest. He knew there was going to be people that just flat out wouldn't harvest. So Pop Peter, uh, Luke said, let me pray that they would send somebody to harvest. Yeah. But you know us would be a shame if I had to start praying to replace some of you for God to send us people to harvest. God send us some people to labor. Is that you tonight? Stay in all of your house. Is that you tonight? Are you saying, man, I just ain't no harvest. Do I need to be praying for God to send us somebody to harvest? Or would you say, you know what? I've been standing idle far too long. I ain't been doing what God needed me to do. I ain't been praying. I ain't been living. I ain't been doing like I'm supposed to. <clears throat> and it ain't, it ain't that I'm, I'm a sinner. It ain't none of that. This ain't what this is about. Tonight. This is about looking your spiritual life over. And saying there's things I need to improve on. There's things that I need to be better at. Because I find myself standing around. I find myself running low on low power. I find myself oftentimes disconnected. It ain't, it ain't about being a center for a center. You need to get that right. But I'm talking tonight to the laborers that's made up in their mind and I'm going to heaven. The last scripture I got for you says, if I didn't shorten the days, even the very elect would fall away. So that lets me know what? That if we're standing out, we're looking around, we're not paying attention, he's going to come back and we won't be ready. I encourage you tonight as you come, don't find yourself standing out. Don't find yourself looking around, but find yourself working and laboring for God. And then make sure that Luke's not praying about you. Make sure that Luke's not looking around and saying, God sent some harvesters because the ones I got ain't getting it done. I 